Hey friends. Um, we're now moving to the friends level. <laughs> um, I wanted to hop on here, still in Sacramento, getting some amazing um, downloads and just really taking some time um, to just really explore not only just myself and where I'm at, but I just feel like I'm in this constant stream of hearing, getting clarity, and just encouraged. So I'm really excited about that. My plug for this video for you is to make sure that you are getting away just one-on-one -on -one time, um, just meditating on the word, meditating and, and allowing heaven to just really interrupt um, your every day. It's so, so, so important and necessary. So I wanna jump in into my word of encouragement for um, today. And so last night um, before I went to sleep, um, I started reading and there was a scripture that I started reading and it was Matthew 4. And I've read that scripture many times. I'm sure you have as well. And it was very interesting because this time something just leapt off of the, off of the page to me that I never seen. And I, I just wanted to hop on here and share with all of you. And I pray it encourages you as much as it encouraged me last night and continues to encourage me this morning. So Matthew 4, I'm going to set the scene up for you really quickly. It's where Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. And it, it talks about him you know, the enemy taking him to this high place. And um, he just finished a 40 day fast. So that's, you know, knowing Jesus, no water, no food, 40 days, you know, praying, meditating on heaven, you know, thinking I'm about to step on the scene and change the game. And so at this point, after he finished his, his fast, if you can just imagine, he probably was hungry, he was thirsty. If you can put yourself in his place, it's it's a place where you're vulnerable, right? Because if you're if the humanity of you, if your flesh is hungry and, and thirsty, you're probably weak, right? Physically. But when you've been fasting for 40 days in the presence of God, your spirit probably is stronger than ever. And so you know, the enemy in his prideful self approaches Jesus and says, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And that's the Matthew 4 verse that I read last night. And I'm reading this and I kept reading. And, you know, if you go read the story, which I think you should, because it's really cool. Um, Matthew 4 talks about then the enemy begins to tempt him in different areas of his life. But I found it very interesting how the first temptation that the enemy tempted Jesus with was his identity. And if you go back and read that, when I read it last night, the thing that jumped out to me was the word if. You know, he wasn't like Jesus, you know, God saying you're the son of God. So go ahead. But he said, if you be the son of God and what the enemy was literally presenting to Jesus, he was taunting him and he was trying to provoke him into a lower mindset to perform for him. But let me back up a little bit because I had to, I was, that so excited me that I saw that last night. So I went back to Matthew three. If you go to Matthew three, it was very interesting because not much is written about Jesus. You know, we know he was baby. He was born in a major. His parents were on a run. He had to go to Egypt. Then he pretty much grew up in Nazareth. And then he steps on the scene in, in, in Matthew with John the Baptist. And so he finds himself at the River Jordan. He was perform. He was, um, uh, what's the word? He was accomplishing a prophetic destiny or word that he would be baptized. And so he goes to the river Jordan and John the Baptist is there. You know, he's, he's spouting off, you know, these repentance, you know, to the Pharisees and Jesus steps on the scene and he gets baptized by John the Baptist. And I find it very interesting how at that point, you know, in the scripture, and I believe it's in Matthew 3, where it says when Jesus was baptized, it said that a voice from heaven, first a dove ascended, which is symbolic to the Holy Spirit. Then a voice from heaven, it says, um, and I'm going to read it in two translations. It says a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. And another translation says, a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. One of the things that I find out that we focus on with Matthew 4 is we tend to focus on the bread part. We tend to focus on the humanity part, how we feel like the great revelation in that scripture is how 
the enemy tempted his humanity. And, you know, if he just came out of a fast, I know that's how the enemy would tempt me because I actually broke a fast for a hot dog. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so the enemy comes to Jesus and says, you know, in his mind, you're probably hungry. He's going to perform because your flesh is going to drive you to perform. So why don't you turn these stones into bread? And Jesus' answer to him is, um, man should not live by bread alone, but but shall live out of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Let me translate that for you. What Jesus was saying is that I know I might be hungry in my flesh, but let me let you understand that I don't live. I live from a place of rest. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is what restores me, is what gives me life, is what gives me identity. Now, if you go back to Matthew 3, Jesus was, I mean, it was the best affirmation service ever because the spirit of God literally opened up and says, this is my son. All of heaven and earth pay attention to him because he is my son. What I heard last night was not that he's just my son. I need you to understand and pay attention to the fact that Jesus did not perform not one miracle. He didn't give one prophetic word. I mean, he may have, but it wasn't documented. So we're just going to ride on that revelation. He, he didn't perform any acts. He didn't start a church. He didn't start a ministry. He wasn't feeding the homeless. He stepped on the scene, not performing anything, just being, just resting. And the father validated him at that moment. I think it's so important to know and understand that, that God was proving a point to us today. He knew that we will be a generation of people that that felt validated by what we've accomplished, that felt validated by what we were able to perform in our own hands. He knew that we would come to a place where we would struggle with our identity, slipping to an orphan mindset and, 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 and come to a place where we will have a fork in the road and deciding on if how valuable we are. And so he knew that we would need to go back to Matthew 3 and, and, and he wanted to prove a point to us. He wanted to prove a point that if, if my son, who was perfect in all his ways, the word says that Jesus was tempted in every sin, every sin that we were tempted in, but and he was tempted in all manner, but he sinned not. So if we have this man who was perfect and yet I didn't validate him based off of what he can do, what makes you think that I'm going to do the same for you? I feel like the encouragement word for you is that you can quit performing. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, if, if that even blushes your soul as much as it did for me, because we are a people and we have slipped into a people that it doesn't feel right to accept something without giving something back or earning it. Our society tells us that we have to earn. We have to climb up the corporate ladder by performing and being consistent and holding on to a sustained performance. But And that's tiring over time. I need you to know and understand that God is saying that you can quit. You can quit performing. That everything you do from today forward should be from a place, birth from a place of rest in a place of you're already in, you're accepted by me. You are known and loved by me. We tend to focus on the bread part of that challenge and completely miss the fact that the enemy was trying to get Jesus to slip in an orphan mindset that says, I have to prove I am marked and chosen by performing. How many times do we see our sisters and brothers in church, you know, or not forget church because that's a whole other topic. I'm going to do something on church hurt. I'm going to do something on leadership hurt too. But anyway, so we see people performing. We see people, you know, with 50 different titles, bishop, apostle, priest, arch, Sheree. What that person is saying is, I don't know who I am. And because of these titles in front of my name, you're going to you're going to not only accept me, you are going to um, I'm validated. What that person is saying is that, you know, they're empty, honestly, and that they're living out of a mindset that is not of God. It's an orphan mindset. Before Jesus did any miracles, the father stated that this is my beloved son in whom without performing one miracle, opening up one church, one mission trip, I am well pleased with you. God's pleasure in you is not contingent. I'm reading notes so you can tell. God's pleasure in you is not contingent upon what you have done. I'm just pausing there. 
His love for you is not, it's not hung up on what you have done or what you can do. We need to honestly get out of this mindset that, that heaven needs us so badly. It's arrogance. He wants to partner with you because he loves you. But none of us are so great that heaven, you know, will not accomplish without us. One thing I've learned that God has rams in the bush, <laughs> a lot of them. God's voice validated Jesus before he did one thing and he's validating you today. I want to leave you with three points because I tried to keep these videos under 10 minutes, but I'm a little over. So just give me a little bit of grace. So I want to leave you guys with three points this morning. Sons are they that are marked by true peace birthed out of revelation that they are already accepted. Sons are marked by true peace. Peace is an indicator that you are in a place of rest with the father. You're not striving, you, that you're, you're not anxious, that you're not running around performing, that you're not like, look at me, look at me. This is what I can do. Here's some tricks for you. Here's a prophetic word. Here's, you know, let me do this. Let me do that. Like a place of rest and peace is a sign that you are operating out of sonship. Sons are unmoved by the world's definition of success. Can we just divorce the world's definition of success? One of the things I can say is that Hollywood and all these places that we, people that we admire, and they've, they've risen to this place of what we deem successful and fame. And many of them are riddled with depression and torment and, and suicide, suicidal thoughts. So can we divorce the idea that success is contingent upon what you have? I honestly am changing my mindset to believe that success is, is, is maximization of, of peace in my life. How much peace do I have? How much joy do I have? My last one, sons decline like Jesus, the invitation to prove they are sons by what they can do and what they can produce. I want you today to divorce the performance mindset. Quit, just quit. I bet you, you'll have so much peace. Some of us perform in our marriages. We perform at our jobs. We perform as parents. We perform as friends. We perform as citizens of a community, as neighbors. You come out and give that little high neighbor and you know, you're stressed because you don't want to be that neighbor on the block that didn't cut their lawn and but you're exhausted and you're running around like a crazy person. Quit. It's time for us to birth everything that we do out of a place of rest, out of a place of identity that we are accepted by the most high and his acceptance is the only thing that matters. Quit and divorce this idea that your success is driven upon what you can accomplish and place on your resumes. Cause that will fade. You can build your resume to be three pages long and still have so much unrest in you and so much unhappiness and not live a life of joy and, and don't have any peace or sleep. But I feel like heaven is saying to you today that where you are, right in the place that you are, that you are accepted and he is well pleased with you. All right, that's all I got this morning. I pray that this encouraged you. Um, be blessed and quit performing.